Okay, so imagine you have a cauldron and you plop some Baywatch in there and then you plop some Lovecraftian horror in there and you mix it all up. What do you get? You get the sand. The movie The Sand. Yeah, it's an atrocity. Whoever made this should be locked up. <laughs> the director's name is Isaac Gabaif. I think that's a crime in itself. What kind of name is Gabaif? <laughs> Normally when I record a video about a specific movie, it's because a bunch of people asked me to do it. But this time, it's just for you, Jerry. I know you're watching this, Jerry. This video, it's for you. So yeah, this movie's about a bunch of hot people and a fat guy who are stuck on a beach and the beach starts like eating people. Literally, that's what happens. I'm not joking at all. <laughs> and it has amazing dialogue, such as... I don't want to die with a dick on my face! Let's start at the beginning, shall we? So it opens up with camera footage of a party at a beach at night. They're all just partying, you know? Just a normal everyday party. Until you see the giant veiny testicle they start carrying around. What the hell is that? Ew. Found it up the beach. It's, it's gooey. I guess it's like an egg of some sort. And I guess everybody at that party was just too drunk to care about Cthulhu's testicle. That's kind of weird, right? Were they all blackout drunk? <laughs> I don't care how drunk I am. If I see this thing, I'm freaking out. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> so yeah, obviously this is like the monster that starts killing people. The next morning, a girl watches a seagull get eaten by the sand. Very normal. I'm not gonna bother introducing you to any of these characters, like giving them names, because I don't think this movie cares about the characters either. I don't remember a single character's name in this movie, so I don't think it matters. All that matters is that there's a bunch of attractive people and a fat guy who's stuck in a barrel. That's it. <laughs> Those are the characters. <laughs> One of the guys looks like that one picture of Yandere Dev. Like, almost exactly like that picture. It's very strange. <laughs> there's a bunch of people that somehow slept in this car overnight, and then there's a couple people up in this guard tower thing. There's a fat guy stuffed in a barrel. I'm not sure how he slept like that, but he did. And then there's a girl with her boobs out, and she touches the sand and starts getting eaten by the sand as well. My feet, I can't... Marsha, just get up. So this guy jumps out of the car to save Boob Girl, and then the sand starts eating him too. <laughs> the effects are so shitty in this movie. I'm talking like Scorpion King level of bad effects. <laughs> like the worst possible effects you can possibly put in the movie, they're in this. I'm pretty sure Filthy Frank used better effects in his videos for YouTube than they did in this movie. This is why practical effects will forever reign supreme. So these two people are being killed by the sand, and the people sitting in the car don't think to turn the car on and drive up to the people who are being killed by the sand and, you know, pull them off of the sand. Instead, they just kind of sit there and they're like, oh my god, what do we do? <laughs> What's going on? They don't even try to turn the car on until after these two people are dead. And then they're like, oh wow, the car battery's dead. Oh no. <laughs> After some investigating, they find out that this monster that's in the sand is killing people with these little, like, pubes that come out of the sand, like these little feelers, and grab people and pull them under. They're kind of like jellyfish stingers, I guess. There's one scene where this guy gets, like, tickled by them, and he has a wound on his belly. It starts, like, pussing and stuff. Oh, my God, it's gross. So the fat guy that was stuffed in the barrel uh, has a dick drawn on his face, so I'm just gonna call him Fat Dick Face. So, yeah, Fat Dick Face is stuck in a barrel. I'm not sure how he fell asleep sitting upright in this barrel. You gotta be pretty goddamn drunk. How is that possible? What? So he wakes up in the barrel. He's like, oh, what the hell? I'm stuck in this barrel. <laughs> and his friends go, don't try and leave the barrel. People are dying on the beach. Not a good idea. Killer, don't move. This is not a joke, Killer, man. Stop. Stop. Please stop. stop. And he's like, what do you mean dying on the beach? And they're like, the beach is killing people. It's like sucking them down and killing them. We don't know how. And he believes them. Not sure why he would believe them. That's very strange, but he does. What is it? There's something in the sand. Yeah, man, there's there's something in it. Like, 
Little hairs are- Little hairs? I've seen better acting in porn. <laughs> Baby, no! And I'm not joking at all. <laughs> so two people have died on the beach and the rest of them just kind of forget about these dead people and they start worrying about getting burnt by the sun and they're like, hey, use this sunscreen. <laughs> we need to worry about the sun because <laughs> skin cancer, <laughs> it's bad for you. Never mind the, uh, the man eating sand that's below us. <laughs> so remember how there was a party the night before? There was a bunch of people there. Apparently they all fell asleep on the beach. Yeah, they're all gone now. And the survivors are just now realizing that the beach killed them all. Except how could this have happened without anybody noticing? None of these people woke up when all the rest of the party goers were being consumed by the beach and screaming out in pain. What? How much alcohol did these people consume? <laughs> How could they have possibly slept through the screams of agony of all these other people? I just don't get it. <sighs> and they were all just conveniently asleep when this monster started killing people? All of them? Remember that massive egg thing? Yeah, well, they finally spotted it. Look at how fucking huge this thing is. Oh, they just finally saw it. <laughs> did they not look around at all? What? So yeah, it's very clear that whatever was in this egg is now in the sand and it's killing people. So a girl throws a hot dog on the sand and the monster takes his little pubes and he eats the, the hot dog. He's like, ooh, yummy, a wiener. So the guy's like, yeah, we should throw a hot dog really far to see how much area this monster is covering. So he tosses a hot dog and a seagull catches it mid-flight. <laughs> so they throw another one and they find out that the creature isn't that far away. So they know how far they need to go to be out of the reach of the monster. So these people finally realize that there's two surfboards in the car that they can use to walk across the beach safely. Would have been nice if they threw one of these to their friends that were being eaten, you know, but I guess they didn't realize that they had them until just now. So this dude is walking across the surfboards on the sand, and he uses this time to confront this girl that's there about their relationship issues, because this is a perfect time to do that. It seems like you had a pretty good night yourself. Come on, dude. What? Who knows, you could die at any moment. But yeah, let's use this time to cause some tension within the group. Yeah, that'll help. <laughs> so the monster in the sand is kind of an asshole and he starts like moving the surfboards. The guy tries to reach the table and he gets tickled by the monster's pubes on his belly. It's like, ooh, I, I got you. <laughs> Look at how far these little like tentacle things can reach. You're telling me that it couldn't reach above the surfboard and grab him? What? Sometimes it's like, oh, they can only reach like this far. And then other times it reaches like two feet. They indicate several times throughout the movie that whenever this thing grabs you, it's gotcha. Like you're screwed. You can't pull away from it. It's got the strength of a thousand men behind those little pubes and it pulls you down. <laughs> and there's multiple times when someone grabs something off of the sand and the monster could easily just like grab them, but it just decides not to. That's weird. So the guy's laying on the table with this injury on his belly and it starts growing pus like immediately. It's really gross. Oh my God, Jonah, your stomach. He's got a pube infection, I guess, on his belly. That sucks. His wound starts like festering. He's, it looks like there's snot bubbles on it. It's gross. Hey guys, Ellis from the future here. Just want to tell you about today's sponsor, Displate. This company makes the coolest posters on earth. They basically make these metal posters that you can hang up on your wall using an adhesive magnet. They're surprisingly lightweight and very easy to set up. And the best part is they're not like a regular poster, so you don't have to use tacks or tape. With Displate, you don't ruin your wall or the poster, and you have a much higher quality print. Not only that, they have a Displate for practically everything on earth. Their design library has 1.4 million plus designs, whether it be manga, sports, gaming, comics, movies, you name it. 
and they have it. And they're a really great company. For every display sold, they plant one tree. Personally, I'm a huge fan of movies and video games, so I got one from the movie Arrival. I got one from the video game Bloodborne. I got one from the anime Spirited Away and a bunch of other ones, and I love them. Now I'm going to teach you how to mount one of these babies on your wall. So they come with these cleaning wipes, and all you have to do is clean the spot on your wall where you want to put the disc plate. Stick these where you're gonna put the magnets. Peel it off like this. There's an adhesive side that you stick on your wall. I'm gonna put another one right next to it. Take this part off the magnet so you can use the adhesive side of this magnet and put it in these squares. So I'm taking a magnet and I'm gonna put it in the square like that. Boom, baby, so now you got both your magnets on your wall and you're not gonna ruin your wall at all. I took the plastic off of the poster, so now all I gotta do is plop it on the wall like this. And it's on my wall, look at that. If I don't want this display there anymore and I wanna replace it with a different one, all I have to do is take it off the wall like this and the magnets are still there, and I just plop another one on there. It's very easy. Be yourself. Get yourself a disc plate. Disc plate is a really, really awesome way to decorate any room. They're offering a great deal for the holidays. One to two disc plates for 34% off, three to four disc plates for 38% off, and five plus disc plates for 42% off. So yeah, please support disc plate. They have amazing wall art. If you're interested in disc plate, go to the top of the description, and click the link, and save yourself some money. So at the start of the party, the Yandere dev guy gets everyone to put their phones in a bag so they don't post anything incriminating online from the party. They lock the bag in the trunk, and they only just remember like two hours after waking up. But because they left the headlights on all night, the car battery died. And then they spend the next like 10 minutes trying to open the trunk of this convertible. I'm pretty sure opening the trunk to this car would be a thousand times easier than they're making it out to be, but they have a lot of trouble doing so. And this girl gets injured while trying to do it, and it ultimately leads to nothing. I got it. <laughs> Ready! So based on the surfboard thing, it seems to me like they could just wrap their feet in anything and they'd be safe from this monster. It just has to come in contact with your skin, right? Like, wrap your legs and feet in something, and you're good. A cop randomly shows up, and he starts walking on the sand with his boots. And he's perfectly fine. The monster isn't doing anything to him. Wow. It's embarrassingly easy to avoid this monster. <laughs> Do they have towels? Like, they must have towels. Who goes to the beach without towels? Just wrap your legs and feet in towels. And then you can walk around freely. Don't forget to bring a towel. Just wrap your legs and feet in towels and sprint. That's all you gotta do. Just sprint away from the monster's vicinity. And you're good. That's all you gotta do. And you're telling me that there's not a single pair of shoes in this guard tower thing? Nobody came here with shoes or even flip-flops? Like nothing? Okay. <laughs> And the funny thing is, they don't even realize that they can do this until they see the cop walking perfectly fine on the sand with shoes. <laughs> He's just walking on the sand with shoes. So this monster can't even go up in between his pant legs and grab his ankles. That's how easy it is to avoid this thing. You just have to wrap your feet up to your ankles and you're fine. <laughs> so they tried to explain to the cop that there's this monster in the sand eating people. They don't try to demonstrate it by, I don't know, throwing a hot dog on the sand. Instead, they just try to convince him of this, and so the cop just makes fun of them. You want GHB? He blames them for being on drugs. I mean, I probably would do the same thing, but he's kind of a dick about it. Maybe they ran out of hot dogs. Who knows? The cop comments on the dick on his face, but doesn't try to help him get out of the barrel. So he's kind of mean. So the cop drops his keys, and he's like, oh, whoopsie daisy. So he goes to pick them up, and he gets grabbed by the sand pubes, and they start sucking him down. With sheer force of will, the cop rips his arm from out of the sand, and his arm is missing, and the effects are absolutely abysmal. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> so he's free now, right? Like, he can just keep walking around with his arm missing, but just run back to the car, right? Obviously, there's something in the sand that's eating 
people. He has uh, proof of that now. So run back to your car. I mean, he doesn't have the keys, so he couldn't really run back to the car, but just run away from this area. That's probably what I would do. I would just run away from the area. But instead, he kind of just falls back into the sand. <laughs> it pulls his entire body under, despite the fact that most of his body is covered with clothing. It's following me. It's following me. Shouldn't it be pulling him only by his flesh? Isn't that how this thing works? But it seems like as soon as it starts pulling on your flesh, it can pull on anything else. It's like, oh, so this is something we can pull on. So it just pulls the entire body under. But it was trying and failing to pull his shoes under the sand. So I'm not really sure how this thing works. So the Andre Dev guy falls off of the ramp into the sand and he starts getting eaten by the pubes. The screams are so fake and the effects are so terrible. It's just... <laughs> it's honestly just hilarious. Help! 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 Help, you guys! The monster effects are just embarrassing. It looks like a bunch of noodles. I know I've been calling them pubes, but they really just look like a bunch of squiggly noodles. Dear Lord. The effects when he dies. Say something, man! I, Say I, I, there's no words. It's been a while since I've seen something this bad. So Dick Face is still stuck in the barrel. <laughs> He's been in there for more than an hour of the movie's runtime. <laughs> just stuck in the barrel. That must have been really fun to record. He's just sitting there stuck in this barrel, just crying out. <laughs> I'm stuck in a barrel. I'm hungry. The sun is burning me. I'm stuck in a barrel. What do I do? Like I stated before, this monster's power is so inconsistent. Like sometimes it takes a while for it to devour someone. But then other times just sucks them right down instantly. Like this girl. Run it! Run it! <laughs> the amount of fake annoying screams in this movie is just ridiculous. None of these actors are convincing. Not one of them. Whenever they're screaming, I just get annoyed. I don't feel for them at all. I'm like, wow, just stop. Please stop. Don't. No, I just want him to die now. Someone... Please, pubes, grab this person now. And not just that, this is when we're introduced to the big tentacles that this monster has. Ah! I guess it just didn't decide to use them until just now. It needed to use them on the fat guy, you know, cause he's fat and he has like a lot more mass. The monster can't just use his regular little pubes. It's gotta use the big, the big arms now, the big tentacles. <laughs> Do I really have to say this? I don't even think I have to say this, but why didn't the monster use the tentacles on anyone else? It could have pulled the cop down. Remember, it was trying to suck down the cop. Well, it just didn't do it until the cop bent over to pick up his keys. And the guy on the surfboard would have been a lot easier if you just brought those big tentacles up and pulled them down. I'd <sighs> Maybe the monster was sleeping and the pubes are what work when he's sleeping. And he just woke up right when he killed the fat guy in the barrel. So one of the girls makes her way over to the cop car and is standing on it. The tentacle shakes the car and the girl falls over and gets knocked out. Don't ask me how this happens. I'm not sure if it's possible to get knocked out by falling in this way, but she did. So it happened. Don't ask any questions, please. This other girl who's dating the guy with the pus on his stomach decides to take a nap on the guy with the pus on his stomach. <laughs> so that's kind of gross. It's sleepy time, guys. The girl on top of the car wakes up and finds a blow up raft. Well, that's convenient. She throws it on the beach and it automatically deploys itself. She jumps into it. Despite the fact that the tentacles, I mean, even the little pubes could probably poke a hole in this raft. The monster doesn't want to do that, okay? It doesn't want to. I guess. So the remaining survivors jump into the raft and the tentacle monster lets them do this. It's very weird, but it doesn't want them to go into the cop car. So as they're going into the cop car, massive tentacles come out of the sand and start waving at them. Like, I think this monster is just saying hello. It's just like, hello. It's not attacking them. It's just like flailing. I don't know what's going on. So one of the girls decides to pour a little bit of gasoline on the sand and then lights it on fire. Somehow this lights one of the tentacles on fire. 
Not sure how that works. It just happened. The monster wiggles its big tentacles around the car and the girls are screaming. It's very intense. And then it just disappears. The monster just like goes away. Yeah. Seriously, it just leaves. <laughs> they don't defeat it. It just goes away. It just kind of vanishes. The next day, someone knocks on the window of the car and they find that the monster is no longer there. The dude with the pus on his stomach is dead, but the two girls are alive, so they leave. Then it shows the monster swimming through the ocean towards a huge group of people. So I guess it found new victims. I guess it was really hungry and there weren't enough people on this beach, so it just left. And that's basically the end of the movie. So yeah. I love the origin story of this monster. They just found a random egg. <laughs> it's like, oh, we just found this massive like five foot by four foot egg just laying on the beach somewhere. <laughs> Where'd it come from? Oh, they just, they just found it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you know how you just like find massive monster eggs on the beach? Not gonna lie, Jerry. I'm not impressed. Never recommend me a movie ever again, Jerry. I swear to God. Unsubscribe right now, Jerry. <laughs> I'm just kidding, don't. Please. Poor Cleo Barry. Cleo Barry is the name of the fat dick face in the barrel. Can we just put Fs in the comment section for Cleo Barry? Someone called him up and they're like, Hey, you want to be in this movie called The Sand? You'll be playing a, a guy named Gilbert. He has a dick drawn on his face and he basically just sits in a barrel for the entire movie. That's it. <laughs> Are you interested? <laughs> so I guess that's gonna do it. Please put in the comment section what you'd like me to review next. And don't forget to check out AlienClothing.com. We have new shirts available. New shirts, including this one. It's so awesome. This girl, she's saying, never let me go, Johnny. But lo and behold, Johnny's a monster and he's about to eat Tracy. Right now, I just decided that her name's Tracy and she's being devoured by Johnny. Go get yourself one of these shirts because they're cool. We also released another shirt over there. And always remember, if you go to the beach, make sure to bring shoes. <laughs> because for some reason, these people decide to leave their house without shoes. I don't, I don't understand. Okay, see you later. Hey.